Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to the Geek Group. In today's equipment autopsy, we have a scale. I think, I could be totally wrong, but I think it's a fish scale, like, like you hang a fish from it. But I don't know because I've never really dealt with a scale like this. It's broken. You can see the screen inside is knocked loose and it's totally not knocked loose from me doing that for the audio sync. So we're gonna open it up and check it out. I think this will let us get a really cool look at a load cell. And if it does, then I will show you what a really big giant load cell looks like later in the video. We don't have one up here, but we've got one down in robotics and it's pretty nifty. And I think it's even wired up and we can make it work. And that could be kind of cool. Because it's, it's not every day that you get to play with a load cell and they're kind of made of magic. Now you probably have a load cell in your house. If you have an electronic bathroom scale, not the mechanical kind, if your scale, if you have a bathroom scale and it has a dial on it, that's not the right kind, like the big wheel that turns, no. But if you've got one with just like a little LCD display, you got yourself a load cell. They're pretty cool. Do not take apart the bathroom scale. You'll get in trouble. But it's a really cool thing to get an old bathroom scale at like a yard sale or something like that. You gotta get an electronic one and take it apart and they're pretty cool. We're gonna open the little battery door. Maybe there's a screw under there. There's a battery in there. Oh, there's two batteries in there. And no screws. Okay, well, I'm just gonna put those back in there then. Pop. I love modern, simple manufacturing techniques. Make it easy to open stuff like this. Come on, there you go. Okay. Oh, look at that, the whole back comes right off. That's really it? Wow, that's simple. That's the whole load cell right there. Look at that. It mounts hanging from this. And the tension causes this. So we're gonna mess with this. Let's, let's get the whole thing open. We might, if we're really lucky, we might be able to get the thing to work. That'd be pretty cool. So I'm trying to be somewhat delicate in the deconstruction because the whole thing just glues together. And they don't make it easy to get in there. This is one of those when it dies, it's dead forever. Hmm. I'm gonna need This is where the bleeding starts. See if I can cut in there with that. It's all glued. Remember how I was saying how much I loved modern manufacturing techniques? Well, I do up until the point when they break out all the glue. But if I can get a little hole in there, if I can get this in, I might be able to work that crack around and just lever my way into this one little piece at a time by tracing back the glue joint. There we go. Come on. Because I'm trying to do this without destroying it. Two screwdrivers. There you go. There you go. Come on around. Oh, we're getting there. Ha! Thank you. But 
I ripped off the power wire doing it, so we're not gonna get it to turn on, which sucks. We'll get our bowl. Oh, those are aluminum screws. But the battery sticks. I know that thing had two batteries in it. Did one go down the hole? There were two batteries when I started. I don't know, you should rewind and see if a battery went down the hole because I don't know where the battery went. Huh, that's kind of weird me out a little bit. All right, inside we have a handful of wires. We've got the wires that go down to the load cell which are black, white, red, and blue. We have a yellow wire, which doesn't appear to have ever gone anywhere. I don't know, maybe the yellow wire attached up here is a ground. And then we've got our positive and negative power wires, a little simple circuit board with a bubble chip and some simple circuitry here. We'll pop that off. I was really hoping to be able to get this to work. I wanted to show you guys the load cell. I thought that'd be pretty cool. But that's not gonna happen. So what I'm gonna do is try and pull those out. Okay, so what we've got, here's, here's the guts of the thing. Oh, those screws are not, all right, oh, cool. All right, let's take a look at what we've got here. On this end, we've got the LCD and the little connecting feed for the display. This is a display ribbon. And then here we've got just a simple little board. There's really not much to it at all. Capacitor, a bunch of little resistors, a couple diodes, not a whole lot to it. On the back, we've got contact patches for the two buttons. These are switches here. Now, what this actually is is just a circuit trace, and you can see there's two different wires. And on the back of the button, the button is made out of just a silicone rubber, and it's got a, a little nub embedded, like cast into the back of it, molded together as one unit. And that part conducts electricity. It's just made of carbon. And when that gets pressed against this, it closes the circuit, so it acts like a switch. Um, a lot of switches work like this today. It's really common in like computer keyboards and, and simple things like that. So here's another switch here. This one's bigger, but just switch one, switch two. And then we've got the lead wires that go down to our load cell. And I'm going to wiggle these and take them right off. All right, so we've, we, don't, we, don't need, we don't even need this anymore. Now we've got, this is where all the magic happens, okay? What we've got is a big hook with a little bit of fish guts on it. Take a look right there, it's fish guts. Okay, I got fish guts and I cut my finger on the thing, so I'm just gonna rub the fish guts on my open wound and this is how I'll die. Okay, so we've got the fish gut hook thing to some awesome emo ball chain. And now this hangs cantilevered on here and then this middle bar goes over to the other side so when you pull on it, okay, it, it flexes that middle bar. Now the middle bar has, we're gonna open, we're gonna, we're gonna dig right into this. Let's just take this apart and see how much we can see. Oh, it's in there, good. I need a pair of pliers. Yes! Those are exactly the pliers I need for this. They're even adjusted right. Ooh, that, that's in there for serious. Oh, really? Doop, doop. There's a little tiny nut on the back. Okay. Now the load cell measures, there's a couple different ways these work. Sometimes they're piezoelectric and they have like 
a quartz crystal. Sometimes they work with different types of conductors where it's measuring the resistance under tension or compression or something like that. It varies. There's a couple different ways to make a load cell. This one, I'm not really sure. But, well, wow. I want to know how big a fish this could take. There, now we've got a pile of parts, which is right where we want to be. I'm very comfortable with a pile of parts. Okay, so we can get rid of all of this. Now, we've got four wires on a little bar. And if we were to just hook this up with the right electronics, which is probably some kind of amplification circuit, and just flex this bar, we would get readings, different voltages, different capacitance. This might measure off capacitance or something like that. But let's, let's see if we can scrape it away at all and see what we can see in here. Because there's, there's goop. It's like a silicone outer protective barrier. And the trick is to see how much of this I can remove without damaging the delicate internals because it looks like there's a couple little pads. Hmm, this is interesting. See, what would be really neat is if I had a way to just dissolve the stuff, but dissolving silicone, not the easiest thing in the world to do. <sighs> yeah, you can dissolve silicone with liquid silicone, can't you? Yeah, that wouldn't be so bad. But that's a different show. All right, let's dig into here. What have we got? I think this is capacitive. All right, that's where we're at so far. I'm gonna stop here so that you can get a good shot at it because I don't know if I go any further if it's gonna destroy it or not. So zoom way in, get a good look there. You can see it looks like, it looks like captain tape. K-A-P-T-O-N, Kapton tape, which you see a lot in speakers. Um, but that's just a insulator tape. I'm gonna peel this up, see what I can get. Very, very twiddly. The ultimate bane of my existence in making equipment autopsy videos is any kind of potting compound. Take a look there. That's what I've got. So at this point, I'm gonna try and peel it right off and see what we get. But this might destroy it. So that, that was what it looked like before, before I carved it off and totally screwed it all up. No, that's on there. I got the hiccups. Oh, I'm seeing cool things. I hope I'm gonna be able to show this to you guys. It's really neat. Almost got it.
see if I just smush this little glue joint, I can, I can separate all the wires without having to cut them. There we go. And they're just tied together here. So we'll undo that. Okay. Now we got all the wires separated. We got all this junk on the table. All right. Take a look here. Now that's as tight a zoom as I can get for you guys, but you're looking at something very, very tiny. In real life, that's, that's maybe a quarter inch square. It's about three eighths wide and about a quarter inch across. But on there, you can see there's four little pads and they're made, they look like this. They're, they're little stacked fingers in like that. And as it flexes, these are glued down firmly to the, the metal. And as it pulls on them and they get thinner, the resistance changes. So it could be measuring resistance, but it's really cool. It's a, it's a strain gauge because in, in reality, this works by flexing like that. So this is a little tiny baby load cell. And this one's good for like, I don't know, 10, 20 pounds. So let's get all that out of the way. And we'll move this because if little load cells are cool. Remember how I told you later in the video I would show you a big for serious load cell? This is a for serious load cell. And we've got it, we've got it wired up, but to make it work, it has to be suspended in a very certain way because this is measuring shear load. Okay, so you can see We've got numbers there, and this is designed where you hang it like this. It's held on the two ends, and then force in the middle, like if you, if you watch when I press down on the middle, okay, at rest we're at 29, but if I press, now we're at 42. So let's have some fun with this and see what we can do. This, by the way, I'll give you some information on the back. Well, here, you can, you can see it. I'll show it to you right there. That's everything you want to know about this load cell. 50 kilonewtons. That's insane. <laughs> That's a massive amount of energy. So, let's have some fun. Now, to make this work, I'm going to have to hang it. But I have some straps. These are the big forklift straps that we use. They're actually rock climbing shoulder length slings. So I'm gonna hop up here, which is gonna be kind of weird because I got my microphone cable to contend with. Ah, but let's see what we can do. We'll just do a little real basic rigging. So we're gonna climb right up on top of here. We'll just toss that over. Oh yeah, this is totally safe. Cool, so we've got two slings. That's a lot of sling though. Okay, we may have to get a little creative, but we'll do what we can. Now, we take this, we're going to slip it right through here, and then right through here. This isn't gonna look dumb or nothing. This is gonna be great. Okay, so we've got a sling and we've got our meter. I'm gonna turn our meter to that camera there. Okay, so we're at 33 on the thing. Now I'm gonna climb up here. I'm gonna do this and try not to die and I'm gonna put my foot right through it. Okay, now as I put force on here, all right, I'll lift my foot all the way up. At rest, we're at 34 right now. Now as I step on this, hey, I broke 100. All right, that's my full weight on it. Ah, <laughs> and it's shifting. <laughs> 
it might be reading pounds. I think it's reading pounds. It's just a little bit out of calibration because it went up to about 150 and I weigh about 150 pounds. So let's see. So let's see what happens if we take this out and hang it from the forklift and try lifting some really heavy things. All right, guys, so we're out here in the middle of the main demonstration hall, and we've got the Batman with us, who is our designated forklift driver and occasionally research ballast load. We've got exactly what you saw set up in the studio. We've got our load cell out here. Our force line is down, and it wants the force in between the two rings and the suspension from the ends. I, I really, I want to know what this was designed for in its normal life. But short term, I'm clipping in, all right? Andrew Weirden is visiting us. Andrew Worden, who puts the weird in Weirden, is coming out to visit us from Wisconsin, and you get to be the designated holder. You also get to be in an official, legit autopsy video now. Awesome. Yup. Now, this isn't zeroed out. We've still got, I'm not going to hit reset or anything because I don't want to mess up the program, but it's saying 31. Now, I think this is calibrated to pounds. Now, I weigh about a buck and a half, so if we do this right, it should go up to about 180 pounds, give or take. So I'm gonna line it up in the middle, so we're cool. Batman, up easy, please. Take me about six inches off the floor. Oh, I gotta lock my beaner for safety. All right, my carabiner is locked for safety. Thank you, sir. You got about 180 on there? Just about. Cool, this is fun. This, this, is, this is my job. So, hey Batman. How about if we compare this with you on here? All right. All right, I'm good. Now you hop on and I'll drive. You know how comfortable these harnesses are. Like, oh, totally. Because this, I can, I can sleep in this, but that's going to just, this is going to suck. Okay, just, I always loved you best. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Going up easy. You ready? Okay, let me make sure you're safe. Hold still, you're good, all right. Hey, Batman. <laughs> that looks. That looks wonderfully comfortable. <laughs> it's not so bad. It's not so bad. <laughs> What's your number? You're at three, four, quit moving. <laughs> just, just hold still. You're, you're, at, <laughs> you bounce and it goes up by 20 pounds. You're at a give or take 410, 415. <laughs> you're such a nerd. So there you get to see our load cell in action with Batman. I'm just gonna leave you there. <laughs> we wanna thank you guys for hanging out with us. Learn more about load cells by looking up the Wikipedia article here. And remember, I'm Chris Bowden, and you're not. And as always, we'll see you next time. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.